Hello, Pittsfield, and welcome to City Talk, and hello to the viewers of Pittsfield Community Television. Recycling this week is uh, plastics, glass, uh, tin cans. Get your recyclables out there. The phone number here at the station is 445-4234. Don't hesitate to no, give no, us no, a call. 443 no, 443-9596. 443-9596. <laughs> 445-4234 is the number you want to call if you want to volunteer at Pittsfield Community Television. There you go. <laughs> oh, God. Let's uh, turn the tape off. <laughs> turn the radio off. We're going to start let's, this let's all, start all over, over again. Let's go back to the intro. <laughs> Four four five four two three four. If you want to volunteer at Pittsfield Community Television, four four three nine five nine six here at the station. Give us a call. We're going to try to have some fun today and be serious at the same time, if that can happen. <laughs> Our guest here in the studio is Sean Sear. He uh, is the education uh, coordinator right. for the uh, educational channel, which is on channel seventeen on your local cable. Sean, thank you very much for being sure. here. Thanks for having me, Joe. And as, as many of you know out there, this is a uh, part two of a three-part series where we're having the coordinators from the three access channels, uh, government last week, education today, and the next week we'll have general access coordinator here, Helen Wassel. And um, so, Sean, why don't we start with talking about the channel, who it serves, and tell us what's going on. Sure. When... Uh when we first got there uh, at Pittsfield Community Television, and that would be uh, for myself and uh, Dave Cachet, who was our government access coordinator, uh, we started thinking about uh, when the channels would split. And I'm sure a lot of people remember uh, just a year ago, we only had one public access uh, channel in Pittsfield, which served public educational and governmental needs. Um, and we started talking about how it would all uh, kind of fit together and, and uh, what channels it would be on. We didn't know exactly what date it was going to happen. Um, by now everybody knows it uh, actually uh, was April 3rd, which uh, was the debut of all the three channels. And uh, the, the purpose of the public educational and governmental channels, uh, the public access is basically uh, designed for people from the public uh, in the area of uh, Pittsfield, Dalton, and Richmond, which is the area that we serve. Uh, the education channel serves um, educators, parents, students, and educational institutions in the area. And the government access station serves uh, uh, people in the government and uh, candidates for office and, and uh, people like that. So basically, that's where we are in, in the whole spectrum of public access, in the PEG access. We're in the education access area. Now, when you say I, you're, the educational channel serves parents and students mm -hmm. and educational institutions in the area, can you define what the area is? Is it just Pittsfield, Dalton, and Richmond, or, well, or can it go beyond that? Our organization is actually uh, funded by the cable subscribers in Pittsfield. So specifically, we serve the, the people, the educators, uh, the students, and the parents in Pittsfield. Uh, there is a, a separate organization, Dalton Community Television, which serves uh, the interests of Dalton. Uh, it's not to say that we don't uh, get involved and do uh, work with uh, schools and students from Dalton, but uh, we're specifically set up and designed to serve the interests of Pittsfield. Okay. Um, now Richmond. So, so how does how does Ri Richmond doesn't really <laughs> become a, a piece of this at all? Well, Richmond is um, is a smaller piece of the pie, if you will. They have uh, many <coughs> fewer subscribers than Pittsfield or Dalton would have. Um, and they uh, receive their own funding for uh, access television. To my knowledge, I don't think they have an organization that would serve those interests. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the channels are seen in all three um, areas, in Pittsfield, Dalton, and Richmond. So in intrinsically, I guess you could say that we do serve those areas. Uh, in fact, we, we air Monument Mountain Television, which contains some Richmond students, for instance. So there is a little bit of overlap, a little bit of bleed over. Um, but for, for uh, technically speaking, we do serve the interests of Pittsfield. Well, could you give us some idea of what the institutions are that the educational channel serves and to, and to what extent? Sure. Um, basically, to uh, our, our direct and most, um, uh, our, the, the institutions in our area would include the Pittsfield Public Schools, uh, Berkshire Community College, uh, the public and uh, the private and parochial schools in Pittsfield, uh, for instance, Miss Hall School, or the Catholic schools, St. Joe's or St. Mark's, um, 
So those would be specifically the, the um, institutions that we would target as, as serving. But we also play programming from uh, Mass College of Liberal Arts in North Adams. Uh, we've been known to play programming from Simons Rock College in, in, uh, in Great Barrington. Uh, of course, I mentioned Monument Mountain Television, which is produced in, um, in Lee, and it serves the uh, Southern Berkshire area. So basically, we, we do share some Berkshire County programming. Now, um, the programming itself, is there a lot of time still uh, available on the channel? How, how are you going about filling the time? Okay. And, and what's happening with regards to overall programming right now? Right. Um, well, right now the regular programs that you'll see on the air are um, some of the programs that have existed on the public access station for a while. Uh, people had been used to seeing the school committee meeting, for instance, on, um, on Pittsfield Community Television. Uh, but now that there are three access channels, that specific program is, is on the education um, channel. And the nice thing about that is that uh, when there are live school committee meetings and people would like to see the meeting as it's happening live at Taconic High School, uh, that's a priority for our channel. Uh, so you'll always see that live every other Wednesday on, on, uh, Pittsfield, on uh, educational television of Pittsfield. Whereas in the past, it had to share that spot with uh, studio programs that might have been happening uh, down in the studio that were public access programs. And also, uh, you know, if there was a special s city council meeting or something, that might have preempted it. So that type of thing you'll see now. Um, there are other programs. I mentioned the MMTV program and the programs from uh, Mass College of Liberal Arts. We also play um, programming from uh, the, the um, U.S. Department of Education, which is satellite town meetings and other informational programs. And uh, those programs are sometimes targeted at teachers, sometimes targeted at administer, uh, administrators, for instance, grant writing programs and things like that. So it's really, it's, it's a whole world of, of programming designed for the education community. Now, the Board of Education was out here a while back, and they had met here in, in Pittsfield. Did right. the Education Channel cover, cover that, those hearings? We actually carried that. Uh, that was something that the Mass Department of Education uh, videotaped for their own purposes. And we contacted them and said, hey, you know, we'd love to get this program here in Pittsfield since it was in Pittsfield. And they got us a tape. We played it several times so people could see, you know, the results of that program. And we're also now in the future going to be carrying those monthly meetings so people can find out what's happening on a state level in terms of education as well. Mark? Uh, I was just wondering, you, does Berkshire Community College furnish programming for the educational station? They do, actually. Right now, uh, they produce program one program called um, 1350 West Street, which is an informational program. It's usually an interview program featuring uh, Dr. Barbara Viniar. Uh, she hosts it. And there's another program called BCC at Your Service, which is more of a, um, a timely, like a news program, what's coming up at Berkshire Community College this week or this month. Um, and they're just about to start their fall season right now. Uh, and we're, you know, we're looking for more programming to come from BCC, and we've been talking a little bit about uh, some math help programs where BCC would uh, uh, provide some programming that would be directed at uh, middle school or high school aged uh, students for the public schools. So we see some crossover uh, that's probably going to be happening in the next year or so. So you'd encourage programming from like the Pittsfield High School or something like that? A uh, student wants to produce a show that would tell, say what's going on at Pittsfield High School? That would be something that you'd accept? Right, exactly. Yep. Uh, and generally, a student-produced uh, program would have to have some sort of an advisor or somebody at the school who's sort of overseeing it because uh, uh, we have a, a rule of 18 years or older can produce a program. And the producer of a program uh, has to be responsible for the content and the crew and the, uh, the use of the equipment and things like that. So it's uh, generally someone over age 18. But as long as there's an advisor or a parent or a club member, uh, a club advisor or something like that uh, in charge, that would be great, sure. The uh, city of Pittsfield is on the downside of renovating just about all of its public schools. And I'm wondering about an inter interactive program within the, within the, the school mm -hmm. system itself. Can you maybe talk a little bit about that? Is that sure. a possibility? Is there discussions going on about that? Sure. How well, will the, the education uh, aspect of or, or the channel itself do that. That's uh, some of the programming that Pittsfield Community Television had been uh, doing for many, many years actually, uh, was interactive teleconferences between schools. 
and having a guest at the studio being able to talk to multiple schools and have them respond uh, over video, which is an exciting uh, form of programming. We're really excited about that. Um, we don't have anything like that uh, directly on the horizon, but we'd like to see that happen. In fact, last year, um, the German program, I think some people in the community might be familiar with that, there was a single teacher and two classes of German uh, happening, one at Pittsfield High and one at Taconic High, and that was happening um, over the, uh, the same uh, interactive uh, uh, wires, basically, that the Time Warner cable provided. And that German program, I guess, just came to an end last fall, so, or last spring. Uh, so we'd like to see something like that happen again. And it's, uh, there's a tremendous amount of potential, really, in the technology that's there. Uh, not all the schools, I think, are, are completed yet as far as the Time Warner cable upgrade. I know that they were talking at one point about having every school uh, have a fiber optic video line, which would be able to transmit and receive uh, the video programming from school to school and also from our studio to the schools and back. And I think at this point, um, Pittsfield High and Taconic High um, are wired up. Uh, but the one, the, obviously, the middle schools have just been completed, and that's probably on, on the verge of being done, from what I understand. And Berkshire Community College is being close too, so hopefully let's, we'll have some potential there. Let's talk a little bit more about, you know, some uh, actual and, and potential programming. Okay, sure. Well, right now, of course, you'll see some of the talk shows that are on the air, and some meetings, and <clears> some <throat> satellite town meetings that we that we uh, carry. Um, but, of course, there's a lot of potential for some talk shows or variety shows that would uh, that you might see. Um, now how, how related to education, mm -hmm. obviously. Absolutely, right. And produced by people who are in the education community. So it would be uh, teachers or administrators from the school departments. It could be parents producing a parent-teacher uh, program once a month, something like that. Um, and it's, it's usually, you know, a talk show is probably the easiest kind of program to produce. Uh, but it can also be one of the most effective because you can get uh, people in the studio with a lot of knowledge who like to impart the knowledge to communities. You could have call-ins. As you know, you have a call-in show that you're uh, part of, so you can get a lot of information back that way. You can have a nice dialogue, so uh, that's usually a nice starting point. Um, of course, the school committee meetings and any special meetings that uh, you might see on the air, we would carry. Uh, distance learning, we just talked about some of the interactive teleconferences, and that would sort of fall into that category. Now, teacher in-service training programs, mm -hmm. I think, is very interesting. There's been an awful lot of half days built into the school calendar this year mm -hmm. for the purposes of in-service training. Do they, do they, meaning the, the school administration, plan on trying to use this technology to, to better disseminate in-service training uh, yeah. time throughout the various buildings? We have been talking to the... Um to the superintendent and the uh, deputy superintendent about that very thing, actually. And I think there will be some opportunities this year that we'll be able to use the um, either the live or the taped uh, uh, facilities that we have to be able to enhance that experience that they have as a teacher in service day. Uh, last year, we videotaped some um, of the presentations at Berkshire Community College that was part of a, a teacher in service day, and that was called Teaching and Learning in the Berkshires, and that was a, um, a keynote speech by Gordon Hyatt. And he came and uh, it was, a, I think it was about a 45 minute speech that he gave uh, with a slide presentation and we videotaped that and showed that several times. We got a lot of nice comments on that and teachers that, who maybe didn't get a chance to see that presentation got to see it at a later date. So there are probably a lot of opportunities there we can explore. Now music, art, and drama you have listed here, mm -hmm. does, does that imply that um, the schools that may put on uh, theater or something like that would be able to use the facilities or the equipment to be able to tape it? For yeah, I think that's a very good possibility. Um, I think what it's going to take is um, a group of students or a club, an active uh, video organization of some kind in uh, you know, a combination of the schools or in each school uh, to provide some students who would be interested in video or production or something like that. Uh, we'd certainly be glad to sort of foster that along a little bit and, uh, and make it happen. And some of the projects that they could do would be maybe videotaping uh, a holiday concert or uh, a dramatic production, something that they could get the rights to videotape, because sometimes uh, drama is tough to, to videotape with the rights. Now, you mentioned clubs. Now, um, I know at the high school, high school level, even middle school level, they have clubs. Are there clubs currently being formed that you're aware of uh, within those within those buildings that would uh, 
promote the use of your educational channel and the equipment? Well, there's been some talk I know about there's it. there's photography clubs yeah. and every other club you can think of. Right. But. And, you know, I think the, the way to start would be to have um, those clubs be an after school or, a, um, you know, an intramural type of thing where uh, there wouldn't necessarily be any credit for it or any grades or anything like that. I think that's probably the, the best way mm -hmm. to start. Um, and then later on, I, I know some schools, for instance, do it as a credit uh, thing where they actually have a class. It's part of their period. They get graded, graded on it uh, in the semester, and it's... Uh, you know, there's a little bit more commitment to it that way, but uh, we'd like to take the first steps and, and maybe just have an after-school club. The phone number is 443-9596. We're going to take a break. Yes, it is the right number, Mark. You're laughing at me <laughs> over there. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Tune in Monday evenings for Armed Forces Night here on CityLink. At 5 p.m., watch Air Force News. At 6, tune in for Navy Marine Corps News. And finally, at 7 p.m., watch Army News Watch. And we're back. You're listening and watching City Talk here at the station of AM 1420 WBEC. And I would just want to urge everyone that Pittsfield Community Television is a, is a vast growing re resource here for the city of Pittsfield. There's three channels and there's an awful lot, lot happening there. And if anyone is interested, do get in touch with them and, and let them know that you are. And they'd be more than happy to uh, welcome you into the world of public access. Plus you get to learn of all sorts of new equipment that could possibly lead to a career somewhere else. Absolutely. That's right. And I do know the phone number, 445-4234. Call them. <laughs> Sean Sears, our guest, he's a coordinator of uh, the uh, Government Access Channel here in the city education. of Pitch. Education, I'm sorry, That's Education right. Channel 17. <laughs> and um, right now, uh, it's called Access it's actually called Educational Television of Pittsfield. Educational Television of Pittsfield, but that's going to change in the very near future. Right. And maybe you could tell <laughs> us what you're doing to right. change that. Well, when we first got started with all the channels and the different uh, names and identities and who the channels would serve, uh, we tried to come up with some unique names that the channels would be identified as instead of just Pittsfield Community Television Education Channel or Government Channel or Public Channel. So we thought it would be nice to have a nice catchy name or phrase. And, and at the time when we launched the channels, uh, we had a couple of ideas and they didn't pan out just right. Um, some of them had been used before and, and uh, var various <laughs> people me. weren't crazy about them. So uh, we went on with, we needed something. So we said, well, educational television of Pittsfield is the most basic thing, but it's kind of long and it's clunky and, and it doesn't lend itself to a nice logo in a way. So we said, well, how are we going to you know, find a, a good name, a good replacement for that? And we said, well, why don't we open it up to um, the people in, in, in the public, but especially uh, students and parents and teachers uh, to have some ideas to, to uh, name the channel. So basically what we've done is we've uh, created a contest. The contest is called Identification Please, and it's, uh, it's a way for uh, people to submit uh, 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 ideas for a logo, for a name for the channel, and we're giving away um, a color TV or a VCR to the winning entry of both a name and a logo. Uh, and we'll have a second place prize and several honorable mention prizes. Uh, the winners of the contest will be featured on a TV program sometime in November where we'll unveil the new uh, logo for, for Educational Television of Pittsfield or whatever it's called at that point. Uh, so it should be quite an interesting event. And uh, we've already gotten several submissions for it. Uh, we've sent out flyers to, uh, in the public schools already to uh, teachers and, and uh, students, and we've gotten some submissions back already. Now, how, how do these get reviewed? Is there going to be a panel of folks that will be reviewing it and making a determination of uh, someone out there that's listening, that's interested, interested how could they go about getting in, involved? Right. And are there certain ground rules that there have are, to be followed? There are, yep. Um, actually, the committee that will be judging it will be made up of uh, our staff and our board members and also our education committee which consists of some uh, professionals that are in the education community already, administrators and teachers in the, uh, in the uh, public schools. So, uh, Basically the ground rules are that they have to submit uh, a name and a logo. It can't be something that's already been used. <laughs> like for instance, somebody can't submit the learning channel because it's already out there. <laughs> Don't laugh because it's, <laughs> it's already been tried. <laughs> um, 
uh, it basically has to revolve somewhat around Pittsfield and uh, either the, the images of Pittsfield or the name Pittsfield or something. Uh, it doesn't have to have that, but it would be a strong contender if it did. Um, it would should be something catchy. It uh, should be something, if it's an acronym of some kind, it should be, you know, maybe three or four letters worth of an acronym, uh, that type of thing. Um, so, the, you know, it should represent education and, and the type of programming and the community that we serve, the education community. So, so this contest is in full swing. Right. And when will when is the deadline for submissions? The entries uh, must be postmarked no later than October thirteenth. October thirteenth. Judging yeah, a will begin. Weeks to go, That's folks. right. And like I said, we've already gotten a handful of them in. I expect that we'll have more, and it should be a very interesting judging process. Now we've only got probably about a minute left. Two, two minutes left. Our time oh, I, I should probably yeah. mention, too, that you could go to uh, www.pittsfieldtv.org and you will find uh, the contest rules and the complete um, flyer, which I have here, that was handed out in the, uh, in the schools. And uh, So that's an easy place to find that. What distinguishes our access from others? Well, mainly um, in terms of uh, distinguishing it from public and governmental, it serves that specific community of education. Uh, whereas, if someone, for instance, from the public uh, wanted to submit a um, uh, something to do with education, that would still be considered a public access program. But if someone from within the education community submitted a, a program about the schools or or uh, or wanted to produce something in the studio, that would be considered an education program an education access program. so so if I did a program on fishing it would be general access and if right. somebody even if who you was were a teacher did a right. program on fishing it would go on education Is not that... necessarily because if someone in the uh, a teacher for instance did one on fishing but it did it because it was their hobby uh, not because they were instructing a class on fishing it would still be on the public access channel. I think that's still a little an area of confusion mm -hmm. for, for the general public what what programming sits where okay in in the three yeah. channels and the so main the main just... yeah the main reason that we did that was so that uh, all those constituencies could be continued to be served with the programming time that we had so for instance we wouldn't want uh, a lot of more public access programming ending up on the education channel only because that would prevent more education programming from being on that channel. That's Sean's really the only here. reason. Thank you very much for okay. being here today. My pleasure. Next Thanks week, for having me. Next week we're going to have Helen Wassel here and we'll be talking about general access. Uh, access Pittsfield, I believe, is what it's called. And um, we'll have a lot to talk about there. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, be safe, be happy. So long.